If I'm brand new to Pinterest marketing, where do I start? This is a question I get quite often and today I thought I would boil it down in one video instead of sending you to a playlist with five or six videos to watch. So this is going to be a very high level overview for any of you newbies out there that are wondering, how do I get started with Pinterest marketing? All the platforms are getting harder to grow on and people are looking for new ways to diversify their traffic and Pinterest is a great way. I have boiled this down into six steps. If you're new to me and you have found this video and this is you know, your introduction to this world, hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I run a Pinterest marketing YouTube channel, this one that you're watching, and a Pinterest marketing agency where we help e-commerce sellers with ads and content creators with organic marketing. So we see, the both, we see both sides of it. We also have a membership that you can join for a low cost of $37 a month where you can learn all of my strategies and implement them in your own business and have a community as accountability and you know, just get started. Step number one is setting up an optimized profile. Now you might be wondering, what the hell is an optimized profile? Well, I've got a couple screenshots for you. I'm gonna show you what those look like here. Step number one to an optimized profile, is having a really nice display name and bio filled out on your profile. So take a look at this profile. That's what this looks like. You can see in their display name as well as their bio that they have used keywords to attract their ideal audience. Number two to an optimized profile is actually having optimized boards. So your boards are where your pins live and that needs to be optimized in order to attract your ideal audience as well. So this is what the boards look like here, okay? So you wanna use keywords and that's step number two. So if you hadn't done the keyword research, you obviously can't have an optimized profile. So that's kind of where there's five and a half steps, right? So step 1.5 is to actually go back and do keyword research. Now, how do I do keyword research? There's a video here. I will show you exactly how to do keyword research on Pinterest, the four ways I do the research on this platform um, in that video. So click on over and watch that if you wanna know exactly how to do keyword research. But essentially you're gonna take your keywords and you're going to create that optimized profile. You're gonna use those keywords in seven different places. We're not gonna talk about all seven right now, but the big places you're gonna use them is your display name, your bio, and your board titles. So those three places, the three of seven, and that is going to help you to attract your ideal audience. Now, step number three, which probably should come much, much later, but without the content, you can't create the pins. So step number three is doing your content planning for Pinterest. Now, Pinterest users are inherently planners, so they are planning for things to happen in their lives, sometimes up to a year in advance, depending on that the, the thing, like weddings or babies. Um, but they are also planning other events like Christmas and 4th of July or Easter, whatever those are, upwards of 90 days in advance. So really making sure that you're doing your content planning for Pinterest and you're publishing content in advance of the event you are targeting in your content is going to be so, so important for you. So keep that in mind when you're doing your content planning as a newbie on Pinterest. Um, just because you have 4th of July next week does not mean if you create a pin for 4th of July, it's going to bring you any traffic. Chances are it's not. It will might bring you traffic next year though. Step number four, which is how to write pin titles and pin descriptions. Now without those keywords in step 1.5, then you can't write optimized pin titles or descriptions, but that is the next step that you will need to learn as a beginner. You will need to learn how to write a pin title that's not boring and blah, and that will make people want to click on your Pinterest image. Now with an optimized Pinterest image, these are the other places you can put your keywords. You're gonna have your text overlay, which is the text that is placed on the image of the pin. That's number four, the fourth place you will use keywords. The fifth place is in your keyworded dis uh, pin title, uh, the sixth place is in your description. That is so, so important 
for making sure that your pins then get found with that ideal audience in mind. So as your ideal audience is actually searching for your content, they're probably not looking for like Nike shoes. They're looking for cute fall boots or cute fall tennis shoes or something like that. Um, not necessarily by brand, but by item or topic. 90% of searches on Pinterest are actually unbranded. So keep that in mind when you are doing your keyword research and crafting those pin titles and descriptions. You don't wanna use your brand name everywhere. You want to use keywords people are looking for. Okay, so step number five is to actually create your Pinterest images. So I already told you the places that you're gonna use your Pinterest keywords. So you're gonna use those keywords and actually create Pinterest images and then get them scheduled, which is typically my fifth step, but I also wanted to include that. So we are going to create the pins and schedule them. Now you've got two ways to schedule pins on Pinterest. There is uh, the first option, which is Pinterest. You can use their native scheduler totally free. You can only schedule up to two weeks out and you can only schedule in every 30 minute increments. So if you wanted to, to schedule your pin at 1,735 hours, then you can't do that. You can only schedule it at 1,730 hours or 1,700 hours. Once you have created your pins, you've learned how to create your pins and you've learned how to schedule your pins, you are then going to start learning how to, to run your analytics and create your analytic reports for yourself. Yes, you need to track them. Yes, it's good to do this in some sort of spreadsheet or Google Doc. If spreadsheets scare you, I have one that I already created, which you can find inside of Pin Profit Academy. It's my Pinterest system. You don't actually have to join the membership to buy the Pinterest system. It's actually linked down below. It's already done for you. So if spreadsheets scare you and you don't wanna create your own, I have one down below that you can purchase for like 27 bucks. Um, Easy peasy done for you. You can also do this in like Google Docs, which is what I first used when I first started managing client accounts. It does not need to be fancy. It just needs to have the data there so you can look at your data over time. Because this platform is very trend-based and timely, you do need to look and start picking up on trends. And the more you're on Pinterest, the more active you are, you will start learning what that looks like for you. But as a beginner, you just need to start tracking them because that's really what matters. Track your analytics without ever thinking about what you're doing wrong or what you could do better for 90 days. At 90 days, that's when you can go back and start analyzing your data and figuring out what worked and what didn't work because chances are in the first 60 days, you're really probably not gonna see much of anything. Those are the six steps to your Pinterest 101 journey, learning Pinterest marketing for beginners. Okay, so if you are a total beginner, this video is for you. If you learned something and this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up because it does help me out. If you need more Pinterest marketing tips, if you're a total beginner, head on over to our Pinterest marketing for beginners playlist and get started watching those videos. That's your next step. In the meantime, I will see you again next week.